let's talk about vaginal estrogen and breast cancer. There are several high quality, large studies telling us that vaginal estrogen is safe in patients who have had breast cancer because the systemic absorption of that vaginal estrogen is minimal. And we are recommending a low dose vaginal estrogen when we recommend it. So many women experience vaginal dryness, vaginal atrophy, genitourinary symptoms of menopause, and vaginal estrogen can be really helpful for a lot of those issues. Sometimes people tell me, I have vaginal dryness, but I'm not sexually active, so I'm not, I don't need to take anything for it. But those people are simultaneously having burning with urination, frequent urinary tract infections, and so the vaginal estrogen can actually help with that. That's why we talk about it in the context of genitourinary symptoms of menopause. There are different formulations of vaginal estrogen. So there are three. There is the cream. There is the vaginal tablet that gets inserted into the vagina. And the E-string, which is a ring that goes into the vagina. I will say I don't typically prescribe the ring. Most of my patients will do either the cream or or the tablet. Uh, and there are advantages and disadvantages to each one. Now, typically we do the vaginal estrogen daily for two weeks to start with, kind of as a loading dose, if you will, and then one to time one to two times per week as maintenance, although some people do use it less than that depending on their symptoms. Now the cream um, can be messy, so that's why some people don't like it but it has the advantage of you can put it inside the vagina and then in the vulva as well, so you can get the outside. And if there's dryness there, that can be very helpful. The tablet uh, that goes inside the vagina is not as messy, but you don't put it on the outside. So pluses and minuses to both. I always tell people, let's try it out and see which one you prefer, and we can always switch. Who can prescribe vaginal estrogen? your oncologist. I prescribe a lot of vaginal estrogen. Your gynecologist, urogynecologist if you're seeing them, um, sometimes primary care. But here's the thing. I find that it's not being talked about. And so unless someone specifically says, are you having vaginal dryness? Are you having frequent urinary tract infections? Um, sometimes people are just not getting their concerns addressed or they're not talking about it in the office. So if if you go in for your visit and someone didn't ask you about it, but you're experiencing dryness, you, number one, are not alone. It's very common. And I urge you to bring it up. Ask about it. Um, if you're, some people are a little bit uncomfortable about talking about it, but if you are, maybe you use the portal to send your doctor a message. But there are ways of making sure that this, that you're being heard because sexual health and genital urinary symptoms of menopause is important. It really impacts quality of life and it's a great, vaginal estrogen is a great, great option. The last thing I'll say is that. If some people are hesitant or they don't want the estrogen, there are also non-hormonal vaginal moisturizers that I recommend and we use often in my patients. Um, so this is um, Reverie by Bonafide and Hylogyne. And both of those contain hyaluronic acid, which kind of naturally attracts moisture to the area. So that is a great, great option as well to try. And sometimes I'll start with those. And then if those are not successful, we'll switch to vaginal estrogen. Before sex, you may also need to use a lubricant. And what I hear a lot is people say, oh, I'm using a lubricant, but they're not using the low-dose vaginal estrogen or a vaginal moisturizer. And so you want to combine the two, um, and that's going to be the most effective way. Let me know what questions you have about sexual health and cancer, vaginal estrogen, any of that. Happy to answer it.